Welcome everybody. In this video we're going to be looking at a few interesting things that I've found. Uh, having a look at do I need a capacitor uh, and the difference and just to surmise it depends on what you're doing uh, as to whether you'll need a capacitor. So we're going to be using my circuit again uh, and the capacitor that I ordered to complete MTEX system uh, we'll be using that capacitor I still haven't uh, built MTEX variation of the laser saber unit which um, instead of using a light bulb it was using uh, resistors so um, Basically, it's a case of find the correct light bulb or use resistors to the said value. So uh, we're going to be just demonstrate. I'm just going to demonstrate the difference uh, having a capacitor. Now, for for lighting, um, no, you don't need a capacitor. One of the things that I um, was careful when producing when designing my circuit was to try and make it as basic as is possible. And so I designed it with no capacitors involved, um, just the wire and a light bulb uh, and, and that one transistor. Um, I know like other circuits use resistors and whatnot, and I wanted to find out just how much was necessary and how much you can design a system around those components not having those components and can other things you can do like um you know extra windings on there that aren't being facilitated may um present a capacitive effect uh, like that 336961 which is not being used here um, in on this main coil I've got it disconnected that's the negative side there and the positive side is sitting down there um, and so I'm going to cut this video to make it nice and short I'm going to cut it at various points along so I can change the setup so um, my circuit can't run that uh, motor that's just there without the capacitor and we'll, we'll demonstrate that now but again if you just wanted lighting um, well the circuit doesn't need a capacitor uh, but if we want to run a motor or, or some other loads, then we may need to pick up a capacitor. So now I just want to make a mention. I've got this light meter here to remind me, um, and it's a working lux meter. The things on there at the moment. Uh, let's put that up to. The Hope if we could see the screen, mate. So you can see that that's a working lux meter, and the reason why I've got that there is just to make a mention of it. Um, someone recently made a post on one of my recent videos um, where they were look. I'll be honest, they were rude and rude to another viewer another subscriber and i don't appreciate that um and you know when i when i answered their question which was a pretty much i've shown you how to do this uh, i've given you the schematics and the schematics for this will be at the end as well but in my opinion um it, it's a stupid thing to say that I'm trying to scam you if I've got the schematics at the end. Because 
you can just go and find out if I'm trying to scam you. If you do it exactly by those schematics, you'll get what I've got. No magic, no trickery, no bullshit. So, you know, to anyone who, and I don't give a shit if you want to post those stupid comments on my videos, uh, go nuts. But when you discourage other people, uh, because I've already done all this stuff, so I know you're full of shit. I know that you don't know what you're trying to let everyone know in the comments that you think you know. I have it sitting in front of me. So no level of education is going to teach me. I've already done this work long, long time ago. My biggest problem at the moment is trying to remember what I bloody did. So, you know, some of this is new, but most of it is, it's like so old that the bloody, the labels are worn away on my meters. You know, so, I don't know, it's, there'll be some smart ass in the comment that will say, well, oh, those labels only have a lifespan of, yeah, and they do. They only have a lifespan of a certain period in time. Otherwise, you'd never buy another bloody roll of labels. I understand the level, I understand the level of uh, trickery and deception in our world, but uh, rest assured, none of it comes from me. All right, so I'm, my main purpose here is to release this information, discoveries I've already made, and if others can do stuff with it, great. If not, I don't really care. Now, the reason for me buying the Lux meter is because people have often said, you know, that the, the brightness, you can't measure it with the eye, and I agree, you shouldn't measure it with the eye. I've been doing this for that long uh, that, you know, it's done some damage to my eyes by looking at these lights all the time. I'm obsessed with these lights. I'm obsessed with light in general. So now for me, it's always been about efficiency. So I can run that system there for five watts. Let's just say five watts, and you know that's if that's an adequate light, then so be it. If not, then I'll show you with the capacity here. Um, but you know this, all this stuff is just trial and error and and research. And if I had have listened to educated people, we wouldn't be standing. I wouldn't be standing here filming this bloody video right now. Because what you see right there isn't in any book. You know, not obviously not Tesla's coils there, but my circuit design there, I've not been able to find it. If you can find it, find uh, the exact same circuit, go nuts because that was an accident. It was birthed by accident, by me just doing what if I connect this to that? What if, what if, what if? Right? And I just connected two connections that were normally in a different position. And this is what we've got. So, all right, enough waffle. We have, uh, so what is it? Just to run that circuit, no capacitor, 4.5 watts. Now, as I said, the light is pretty bright, and, and that'll uh, charge up these wireless rechargeable um, capacitor lights. So I just sit them on the side there like that. And I probably should make up a little base for them so that they're not so wobbly. And they just charge up on their own. They're constantly on so that they don't damage the capacitors. And yes, you can put um, extra circuitry on and a switch, and that sort of. So you could put a balancer on there and and a switch, and so you weren't wasting that light. But my circuit's always on anyway, so I just I may as well um, I may as well be charging them up and. 
again, then I don't need to spend more money. That's just two capacitors, the ferrite rod, and, and the wire and diodes, and that's it. I'm done. You know, so, yes, you can do these things, but my mind is, is always trying to achieve it with minimal components, therefore minimal expense. Therefore, you could probably go out and you know, scavenge most of these components um, you know, from scrap, literally from scrap. All right, so this capacitor here is the one that's mentioned there, um, on the screen. Sorry, uh, 1.5 nanofarads, 630 volts. So we have currently, I have the other, that's connected to this yellow lead, which is connected to the negative of the battery that, that runs that circuit. Okay, and if we were to attach the negative, so my, my circuit, you can either run the light through to earth like it currently is, and then the return, it has to have two earths to achieve that. The return is that little yellow and black connection there on the, on the black lead, directly center of screen. And so without that second earth, this light doesn't work. These ones still function. Um, and and I'll, I'll show you in a second as well this, um, this setup here. Those uh, ferrite suppressors are all connected in series. There's three of them there. And it matters which connections go where because the magnetic field changes and you'll get a very, very diminished electrical field. I'll try and show that in a second. So we can either connect my light, as I was going to say before, either through Earth, through those, those two Earths I just mentioned, or we can connect it directly back to the battery. And you'll see in my tutorials that um, it, it, it can be either that way. So if, say, you wanted to run this with... Out either earth connections you could do that it definitely misses out on some of the the interesting effects if you don't use earth but you can just run this light so high voltage is that green line there and we can just run that directly to the bulb and then back to the battery so we'll demonstrate that now and see there's very little um, difference there is a difference it's brighter when going back to the battery and it doesn't make a difference from that point if the uh, earth is connected or not it's just a little bit brighter going through the battery but if we go back to the battery through this capacitor then we can see if that has a positive effect. And again, that's bright, brighter, sorry. But where it really comes into effect is on this side. Now, warning, bright light, this is gonna blow, <laughs> it's gonna blow your eyes out. Okay, so now you notice there'll be the initial flash. That is the level that the light stays at, at full intensity. Um, when I uh, so when I look through the camera uh, as I'm filming this, it has its initial flash, and then the CMOS sensor dials it back, like to to avoid oversaturation. So the initial flash is the continual level of light output. Now I don't need my meter to know that it's effing bright. And yes, I have connected it up to the mains, and it is definitely brighter doing it this way. So, as for, you can't measure <laughs> by your eyes. Try and see if you can see after this. See what I mean with that initial flash? 
is the full intensity it stays at that and then the camera dials it back to some sort of white and light it'd be hard uh, to show you other than build it with the schematics I've already supplied and just see it for your own eyes maybe yeah like so the saturation on my hand maybe on my just above my thumb beside it is probably a good indicator um yeah she's well and truly cooking now what is the wattage for that it's 11.4 11.6 watts okay so a marked increase but without that we have a very different circuit uh, so this little system here these three ferrite suppressors all connected in series are charging that 1400 volt DC 20 UF capacitor and out of that we're going to be charging that um, capacitor bank there it's made up of 2.7 volt 500 F caps well in series I think what does that make so I think it's like 150 farads uh, five in series yeah so about 150 farads and I think like 13 four, 14 point seven, 13 point seven. I don't know I don't yep I don't know um, can't remember so we'll connect that, that motor now what I've done is I've connected it up to this switch here uh, to before the switch so that's currently running that lighting system I'll turn that off and we'll see 5.1 volts will go to zero and I've connected this motor up before the switch so that I can just demonstrate what that amperage is now this motor does not like to be connected like this and I should uh, have had a stable means of connecting it but it's just a, a quick demonstration oh. so if I can try and get that on there without it rocking okay so that mode is going it take a lot to run it but that's that's got no load as well Uh, probably a reasonable load would be it's around about the five watt mark. So that's that's going to burn my fingers. It gets warm. Alright, uh, so five. Let's say let's be kind and let's say six watts. It's got a reasonable amount of torque it'll burn me before I would stop it oy, oy, oy. Uh, especially if I strapped it down oh shit okay yeah we're not gonna be a dickhead especially not on camera okay so <laughs> that's how you burn yourself right um so that's what we we now know that say three three and a half watts no load say six watts loaded all right now I will disconnect that and we will now connect it to the capacitor that is fed by those three uh, Balin suppressors uh, so if we just try to slot that down there move those capacitors out the way a little okay and we go 
negative and to the positive. Okay. Now that is just running straight off my circuit and off of these three three um, suppressors. Okay, so if I just disconnect that and we just see what that load is on the system. Okay, 5.1 watts. And then if we connect up, we'll notice that when when I do connect that, the bulb gets brighter. But you see there's no the motor just refuses to operate. Okay, bulbs a little bit brighter. And it's pretty much acting like a resistive load. Okay, so that's where this capacitor comes in. So it won't operate without it. And now if we add the cap, and if I just stick that there, give a little motor a spin. So you can hear that it, it sort of struggles to run it. Uh, if we disconnect the light, and we just go straight to capacitor. Okay, so it does run it. It's a little bit less powerful, and I believe that a lot of it is due to the type of electricity or the high voltage spikes that need to be caught by a capacitor um, so clearly it can run it so what are we that's the other thing I noticed that was a little bit interesting so 10.4 watts 10.5 watts with the motor running and we take off the cap we get the motor stops. Now if we go put that light back on. Okay, so now we're back down to the five or so watts. We put on the cap. And then we get 10.7 watts. All right, but what happens? Start the motor. And it just, it behaves so weird. So now one thing I've noticed is some of the electricity is being lost and I worked that out by placing different diodes into the well placing diodes into the system at different places and so oh that's something smells like it's cooking okay so what I'll do is I'll just turn that off and then I will connect up those capacitors there because I think what's happening is a lot of the or some of the electricity is going overboard and or just not being able to be utilized correctly and if you connect everything up properly then you'll have uh, a situation 
where you have more than enough power to run that motor. So we're going to be feeding into this capacitor, then into these capacitors, and then into the motor. And the same should be done for battery charging. It's important that you have an extra diode coming off of the first capacitor. Otherwise, you're really just connecting two different size capacitor banks in parallel. Okay, so it's important to have that extra diode in there. Okay, so now we have the motor connected to that capacitor bank, which is being charged by that little, well, not little, by that capacitor there. Now, they're a welding capacitor. I've had a few people ask me about it. That's the one there. You can find them if you just type in welding capacitor. It's 1,400 volts. If you notice, the one is starting to fade off. Uh, on another one, I've got, I've got a few of them, but on another one, I've got the number one has faded off as well. I'm not sure if it's something to do with their printing. So you can hear that motor is slowly winding down and that's because it's just running off of the existing charge inside that capacitor bank. And But it's important to use that capacitor bank as a float uh, to absorb the different type of electricity that this circuit generates. And when you connect it up that way, then you can supply that motor with the correct amount of electricity that's being converted by that point. So, and you notice that when I turn on my circuit, so we can see there my circuit's not running. Flick the switch, listen to the motor. Okay, and you can see that light comes on there. Alright, so if we watch that motor. Right, and it's still not um it's still not up to what it was before in when it was using the three and a half watts. Um and for those I'm probably assuming it has no torque anymore it still has torque nowhere near as much but when that capacitor charges up because there's excess power if it's able to run the motor and then the capacitors store the extra impulses and then eventually this this motor ends up running faster and and it gets a little louder there as well but without that capacitor uh, sorry but yeah without this capacitor from the high voltage line across to the negative you just will not have that motor running it'll run off the capacitors until the capacitors drain but the circuit can't run it by itself now for those of you who are hell-bent on the concept that you have to have special cores when I use a special core a ferrite core or other than that it's just air core you can hear it slow down So is the ferrite core better? Not in my opinion. At least not with this circuit for sure. Um, so yeah, just some interesting stuff. Uh, normally when you load up a system, it should be more wattage seen on the meter there but for some strange reason this seems to reduce 
the wattage from the system. Um, so let's see if we can. There we go. We took that off. Oh no, I'd have to connect up that light again. Um, but yeah, I'm sure I've bored you enough. Just some interesting things. Uh, you see, yeah, 1.5 nanofarad, 630 volt capacitor is allowing me to run that reasonably powerful motor. And as I said before, as these capacitor, as that capacitor bank stores up that extra charge, um, then uh, it gets going a lot faster. So that that tells me that. It's definitely more. It's definitely putting out enough because if it's able to saturate these capacitors and then have some more on top of that to run the motor and get faster and faster, then it's definitely filling up. It's it's the same thing can be used for battery charger instead of running this motor. You I was charging these batteries before. And it charges them just fine, and that that'll work with, uh, with or without this capacitor. But if you want to run that motor, the the capacitor is essential. It just doesn't seem to have what it needs. All right, thanks for watching. This is bloody long. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, have a nice day.